Hello there, random smart person on the internet. While SpaceX and NASA's Artemis missions may be getting all of the buzz, the European Space Agency launched a mission that I'm really excited for. The Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer, or JUICE, embarked on an eight-year journey to Jupiter on April 14th, 2023, with the spacecraft estimated to arrive at the gas giant in July of 2031. The ESA spacecraft will make observations of Jupiter and its three large ocean-bearing moons, Ganymede, Callisto, and Europa categorizing the Jovian system in great detail. Jupiter orbits on average about 444 million miles from Earth, so it's clearly more than a hop, skip, and jump to the giant planet. But other missions have made the trip from Earth to Jupiter much more quickly than JUICE will. As it turns out, one of the main factors dictating the travel time to Jupiter is whether the spacecraft will fly by the gas giant or insert into orbit in a relatively long-term mission. The first spacecraft to journey from Earth to Jupiter was NASA's Pioneer 10, which launched on March 3, 1972, and made a flyby of Jupiter on December 3, 1973, meaning it reached the gas giant in just 640 days. Pioneer 11 was even faster on its flyby trajectory, reaching Jupiter in just 606 days. Then there are orbiters, which must be much more deliberate than flybys because they will need to be going slow enough at the end of its journey to be captured by Jupiter's gravity. JUICE will journey for eight years throughout deep space. NASA's Galilean probe took about six years to trek to Jupiter, launching on October 1989 and arriving in orbit on December 1995. Then NASA's Juno mission launched in August of 2011 and reached its destination in July of 2016. Such variations in orbiter travel times stem from several factors. For example, the distance between Earth and Jupiter varies greatly. In addition, Orbiter missions don't take a direct approach to the giant planet. They take a more scenic route around the inner solar system, flying by other planets to get speed boosting or trajectory sculpting gravity assist. For instance, Galileo traveled about 2.5 billion miles to get to the gas giant, taking gravity assist from Venus, Earth, and even the asteroid Gaspara along its way. JUICE will employ a similar strategy. The mission will do complex sequence of gravity assist maneuvers starting one year after launching, taking Moon and Earth gravity assist, both bodies at the same time, to get the extra energy. And then we have a Venus fly by gravity assist and two more gravity assist missions in 2026 and 2029 to arrive at Jupiter in July of 2031. You may be wondering, what is a gravity assist? Gravity assists are flyby techniques that can boost a spacecraft's momentum. Mission planners use gravity assist to send spacecrafts on journeys that wouldn't be feasible with a direct route. They would require way too much fuel, for example. A gravity assist can be used to steal momentum from a spacecraft. The Galilean mission is an example of this. The NASA craft reduced its energy relative to Jupiter by flying in front of the volcanic Jovian moon, Io. Propellant is used to both speed up and slow down a spacecraft, so an energy-stealing gravity assist can reduce the amount of propellant that a spacecraft needs to use in order to insert into an orbit. A gravity assist works in a similar way as a ball rolling down a hill in a valley, via transfer between gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy. As a spacecraft approaches a planet, it falls into the celestial body's gravitational well and gains kinetic energy, speeding up while losing gravitational potential energy. The spacecraft then leaves the planet on a new trajectory, which can be adjusted by altering the distance at which the spacecraft passes the planet. Planetary flybys can therefore have a slingshot effect on a spacecraft, helping them get the most out of their limited fuel supplies. JUICE is one of these spacecraft. JUICE simply does not have enough energy at launch to go in a more direct orbit around Jupiter, so we'll need to make all of these gravitational maneuvers in order to gradually increase the speed of the spacecraft in order to reach the gas giant. The extra energy imparted on the spacecraft has to come from somewhere, the planet's motion. The mass between a spacecraft and a planet is so great, however, the resulting slowdown of the planet is so small it's virtually immeasurable. As an example, when NASA's Voyager 1 made its gravity assist flyby of Jupiter in 1979, the gas giant slowed its orbit by 10 yacometers per second, or this number in kilometers per second, while Voyager 1 got a 10 kilometer per second speed up boost. To get to Jupiter, JUICE will receive a total of four inner solar system gravity assists from the Moon, Earth, and Venus. Back in 2017, ESA was proposing a fifth and final gravity assist from Mars around three years before reaching Jupiter, but that is no longer the plan. 
JUICE will head to its first gravity assist in August of 2024 after completing its first solar orbit. And this will be a very special one for the ESA craft and for space exploration in general. This will be a combined moon and earth gravity assist, officially called a lunar earth gravity assist or LEGA. This is the first such operation that has been performed of this kind. The first one will be very challenging because it is not just an earth gravity assist. It will be a lunar earth gravity assist, which means you will have to pass by Earth and the Moon at the same time. So this will have to be the most accurate gravity assist ever done to date. The next gravity assist for JUICE will occur a year later, in August of 2025, when the spacecraft gets a boost from Venus. The spacecraft's two final gravitational assists will both come from Earth. JUICE will fly by our planet in September of 2026, and then we'll make one final visit to Earth in January 2029 when it gets yet another gravitational kick, its last one before reaching Jupiter. This won't be the end of gravity assist for JUICE, however. Even after it's begun its scientific mission, the spacecraft will need to perform gravity assist to get to the moons of Ganymede, Europa, and Callisto. JUICE will orbit Jupiter initially, performing multiple flybys of the three moons. It will then shift to orbiting Ganymede in 2035, becoming the first probe ever to orbit a moon other than Earth's. The gravity assist will have to be precise. But ESA has a very capable people in the mission control unit, and they are accustomed to these maneuvers. So there you have it. You learned about ESA's mission to orbit three of Jupiter's moons. Leave a comment down below on which future mission you are looking forward to the most. Comments are good for the YouTube algorithm. If you want to learn more about NASA's $327 million mistake, click on the video right here. Or if you want to learn more about dinosaurs, click on the video right here. And always remember, have fun with STEM.